so I've been thinking a lot lately. And as I'm sure you guys know, a lot transpired before the new year began. A lot of different things that got the gears in my head turning about a myriad of issues that have infested online leftist discourse. I'm going to try and talk about this subject as sensitively as possible, but I know that there will be people who will intentionally misread what I'm trying to say. Please, I implore you not to do this. Fuck y'all bitches. <laughs> I've got like cat hair in my throat. <laughs> How the fuck did that happen? Okay. The premise of this video is that social justice, especially online, has evolved into a bit of a clout game. I will preface this by saying that I'm not going to be going after anyone in particular or mentioning any names, specifically because I believe that this is an issue that none of us who create content are immune to. I also don't think that this is always necessarily intentional. Rather, I feel that by sharing my thoughts, it may inspire people to look out for some of the weird pitfalls that have just been wasting to trap us. I'm pretty new on the platform, and during my short time in this community, I have learned the secrets of the back end, so to speak. I have beheld the sacred process of constructing a persona, I have come to know the mysteries of getting people to support your work. And I've also known the glorious exhilaration of reaching milestones. But to be fair, that exhilaration has been a mixed bag with all of the anxiety. The validation of knowing that your audience has grown is one of the best feelings ever. But the anxiety deepened when I started to really think about the role that the accumulation of social capital plays in what I do as a creator, and also when I started to examine the way that capitalist logic plays a role in how we interact with our audiences and our platforms, even without me necessarily even wanting to. The anxiety deepened even further when I started to realize that the metrics of these different capitalist platforms pretty much go against everything that we stand for and espouse as a community. It also encourages some very, very troubling behavior in the name of maintaining visibility and power. This is exactly what I'm going to be discussing today. Like I said before, it would be incredibly remiss of me to blame this issue on individual opportunists without actually examining how the system itself encourages us to behave opportunistically. It is in fact, ur capitalism. It is in fact the logic of capitalism that has invaded all areas of the human experience within the capitalist sphere. Leftist circles are not immune from this form of infection. Even though we often put on our Sunday best and our halos and behave like we are if nobody asks. Through looking at the metrics of YouTube, Twitter and other major platforms, we are all encouraged to behave in profitable ways. And even when we make colossal mistakes, we are not aware enough to acknowledge this. I think we need to start getting used to the idea that we do not own these platforms. These platforms alienate us from our leisure time. No matter what impulses drive our activities on social media, the environment itself does not cater towards effective communication. Trying to make the world a better place using tools designed by capitalists is in fact a fool's errand and we really have to try to circumvent this. Attention, it all starts with attention 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 is what i'd like to assert is the functional currency in the marketplace of ideas as peter coffin points out in his work attention is the currency in the marketplace of ideas this abstraction applies very literally if you are able to get attention on your hot take that attention then becomes more views which algorithmically directs more people to your channel which results in more subs followers, which will also guarantee more views in the future. This has the capacity to turn into real profit through Patreons, donations, merch and revenue. 
Another great example of this is Ben Shapiro and Jordan Peterson, both grade B commentators, who have found a cult following that guarantees sales of their mediocre books. In the online sphere, there are many ways to get attention. Some are, of course, benign, but more often than not, you'll see cynical exploitation. As I said before, social justice is incredibly vulnerable to opportunistic attention seeking because one of the fastest ways to get attention is through outrage marketing. Showing some kind of victimization or the perpetuation of some kind of unjust system accumulates a lot of attention. And this is because when people see injustice, they get outrage and that outrage then turns into social capital. One of the key aspects of social justice is the empowerment of marginalized and oppressed people. People who have historically been denied the ability to speak up for themselves. And this is a good thing. This is a great thing. I am not by any means trying to say that this is a bad thing. Considering who I am, that would be a pretty stupid thing to do. My gripe is that this makes social justice incredibly vulnerable to opportunists. People who want to turn their victimization into capital gains. Being part of a community that claims to have the goal of protecting and uplifting people makes it very easy for those who have the goal of cynically manipulating these systems and communities to gain attention and therefore social capital for themselves. In this environment where a crown of thorns can be transformed into social capital, there are people encouraged to behave in very dangerous, very cynical ways that not only fail to help those in need, but often serve to further the marginalization of suffering people in real life. The right wing also has its own form of what I like to call don't tread on me victim culture. Whenever a right wing person feels victimized by liberal culture, they can easily pander to the right wing's sense of outrage and gain social capital from this action. Louis C.K. is a great example of how this works. He violated the trust of women close to him by exposing himself to them in a lewd manner. And now his entire career has been undone by the weight of public perception. Despite this, there are those who believe that society's punishment was too harsh and that his deplatforming was a symptom of liberal tyranny. In their eyes, Louis C.K. became a victim. In a recent stand-up set he performed, his jokes pandered to this right-wing sensibility in an attempt to regain sympathy from a new audience ready to receive this form of validation in exchange for social capital. These kids are nuts, but they're not. They're f***ing mm. They're just boring. <laughs> Tell them you shouldn't say that. What the f*** are you, an old lady? What the f*** are you doing? <laughs> mm, that's not appropriate. Child, why are you finger f-ing each other and doing jello shots? This sort of opportunistic victimhood exists just as much in the right wing as it does in left wing circles. Blue Lives Matter and all that. The Me Too movement was also subject to this kind of exploitation from people looking to profit off of the attention that the movement has received over the last two or so years. Even though the Me Too movement started out as a movement that was primarily focused on the sexual and domestic violence directed towards poor women of color, it then evolved into a movement that primarily focused around the sexual violence directed towards rich white women in Hollywood, hyper-visible actresses. In this day and age, there is nothing more emblematic of capitalism than the mechanisms of the entertainment industry and media. Hollywood, so to speak. The narrative was appropriated trivially and absorbed into a system where ruthless careerism and exploitation is the norm and fighting for status is the primary aim of its denizens. The new colonization of victimhood is perfect for those looking to become culturally relevant This acts as an easy and bulletproof way to gain social capital. Careerism 
disguised as social justice. So I'm gonna take a pause here to stress that any kind of outlet that is designed to allow victims to come forward with their stories of abuse is a good and necessary thing that should be encouraged. I also want to stress that I do agree with the Me Too movement in principle and I support the victims. My gripe with Me Too is the emblematic way that it has been used to produce and control social capital. So please, don't get it twisted. Much of the pushback against Me Too was rooted in misogyny, but there are also valid criticisms against some of the figures who cloaked themselves in the shroud of Me Too in order to gain social capital. Women like Rose McGowan, an actress who used her plight as an opportunity to write and sell a book, do tours and press while trivializing the plights of trans women and women of color with her visibility. Trans women are in men's prisons. And what have you done for them? What have you done for women? Lots of things. Yeah. I've done lots of things too. You don't know my life. Don't sit down. Sit down. I do not subscribe your language. You do not put labels on me or anybody. Step the fuck back. What I do is for the fucking world and you should be fucking grateful. So shut the fuck up. Get off my back. What have you done? My name is Rose McGowan and I'm obviously fucking brave. God damn it. In a culture where victimhood is enshrined in such a ham-fisted way, it is almost impossible to criticize a victim without looking like you're further contributing to their victimization, even if you have valid questions to ask. This creates a class of people that are immune to critique, and this is incredibly dangerous. It also creates a class of people that will shout you down if you dare question a motive that you perceive to be unsavory. In Hollywood, personal brand is key. Your capital is your fame. Your fame is the spectacle of you represented by your public persona. As more and more began to use it cynically, the Me Too movement became less about helping women overcome sexual violence and more about power and status and planting a flag of victimhood firmly in the ground of your new colony. It is a marriage of the algorithm's metrics and careerist capitalism that encourages these kinds of self-interested motives. Because of this, we see people taking social justice out of its proper context and presenting it as a commodity to be consumed. And when they market it that way, it gets them attention. And attention equals power. This is a thing I think we need to be incredibly weary of on the left. And honestly, I'm getting so, so sick of it. We need to be honest about the fact that there are people who are looking to manipulate us. By using our rhetoric and taking advantage of our goodwill in order to establish power and social capital for themselves. Those who use social justice moments as an opportunity to clout chase. Those who use identity as a shield from criticism. And those who sow and harvest a cult of personality in our communities. These are the people that we need to be incredibly weary of. Ruthless careerism opportunistic attention-seeking, cynical identity politics, and the emergence of toxic call-out culture are a few of the issues that have arisen from the system, to name a few. Issues that, if ignored, will derail any potential that we have in our hands at the moment. Especially toxic call-out culture. Call-outs, whether completely genuine or based on the flimsiest stories, are in fact an exchange of social capital. The fact that one simply knows and acts with certainty creates an authority by virtue of appearance. To see is to believe. This is manifested in a capitalist social system as, you guessed it, social capital. Just like with material capitalism, 
The ability to exploit means some eventually will. And who would regulate callouts in the first place? Whether we want to admit it or not, there is an incentive for bad faith, to misinterpret or to misrepresent. And when this happens, it is almost always done in the aim of gaining social capital at the expense of the other person. This is not to say that all callouts are bad or that we should never challenge people who are in positions of power. It's quite the opposite, actually. This is a call to work in good faith and keep one's eyes open. We live under capitalism and we are constantly told that this is the way of the world. Why would it not seep into our social affect on the left? To exercise scrutiny on all parties and all elements of a story is infinitely less likely to hurt the innocent. Unfortunately, the systems we are operating under clearly reward this sort of behavior, YouTube and Twitter especially. When the metric of attention is the highest value, we must be careful to discern where that attention is coming from, how it was gained and what it is being used for. It seems as if in some areas, the fight for social justice has devolved into a fight for power and visibility. And as an anarchist, that seriously rubs me the wrong way. Some people have gotten it into their heads that the answer to oppression is power with a capital P. This is a warped way of viewing things and one that leads to further trouble down the line. The answer is not to become a social capitalist, but to democratize the means of support. Let's take an aside to demonstrate a positive way social capital can be used. And as I'm sure a lot of my viewers will be thinking about H Bomber Guy's Donkey Kong stream, where he gathered an immense amount of social capital for himself and his guests and used that to push capital towards the trans community. During any attempt to give him credit, he would thank them for their kindness and diffuse their credit to the donators and the guests and the needs of the marginalized community itself. It is a crying shame that this was ever needed in the first place, but it's a great example of using the systems against themselves to undermine the way they require and generate social capital. Identity. It's the fucking word of the century, right? So much of our cultural conversation is centered around this hazy deception. What really irritates me about the conversations about identity on the left is that it seems that people forget that capitalism exists, primarily to exploit and alienate us. And in this mode, capitalism functions and thrives on the cultivation of identity. So often leftists put on blinders about this. Capitalism can cultivate an identity from anything, enjoyment of movies, video games, music, sexual attraction, and much more. But now oppression and suffering are being turned into identities that capitalism is in the process of monetizing and commodifying. Oppression and suffering are the new metrics by which we measure our identity. Capitalism has monetized both ways you can express your experience and grievances and ways in which you can seek catharsis and resolution. As oppression and suffering has become monetized and commodified by capitalism, we are now seeing an increased pushback from the right wing, especially towards those who are unable to even have a say in capitalism in the first place. People who are already disproportionately marginalized and victimized by society and culture. The centrists and right-wing folk who are skeptical or anti-social justice see the cynical way that capitalism appropriates these causes and pushes back vigorously against groups and people who do not profit from the appropriation of their struggles. 
The fact that identity has become such an important metric within leftist dialogue has made it very easy for the process of commodification to start and derail useful energy into soulless fights for status and recognition. The category of victimhood has now been absorbed into the capitalist playbook. The most horrendous part of this is the cynical way that victims are treated and the increasingly high bar that is set in order to convincingly play the role of victim. This reinforces the idea that empowerment and autonomy are dangerous. Society loves to feel like it's helped a victim, but as soon as that victim becomes empowered, they are then perceived as a threat to the status quo. As tough as it was, I eventually had to face the fact that the liberal appropriation of social justice isn't really about empowerment. It's about creating a category of perpetual victimhood that can be mined for social capital without actually challenging the systems that perpetuate victimhood in the first place. This is a malignant cancer on the body of social justice, one that needs to be cut away immediately, one that needs to go the way of the dinosaur. Not only does this kind of mentality leave oppressed people vulnerable to attacks, it also creates an environment where no real social gains can actually be made. It shifts the focus away from any kind of action that makes a material difference in people's lives and into the realm of the accumulation and management of social capital. We are caught in a cycle and if we stay in it, it will devastate any hope of making a better world. Identity should never be used as a means to assert and accumulate power. Identity should never ever be used as a shield from criticism. And most importantly, identity should never be seen as a merit in and of itself. What exactly do we want? Where exactly are we going with all of this? What exactly is it that we're trying to create? If I'm honest right now, I deduce that it's a lot more about power and attention than a lot of people are willing to admit. At the moment, the zeitgeist favors us. The topics are hot and trendy, but like everything else in nature, it will eventually shift. And if we can't use this momentum, we will have lost a crucial moment. What then? What will happen when all the social capital is mined dry and the pickings are thin? Will we still be able to use these algorithms to organize? I mean, the fact that there isn't really anyone else talking about this stuff at the moment really does make me worry. We really can't afford to kid ourselves about the paradoxes at play. Wanting to spread anti-capitalist messages on capitalist platforms, wanting to spread messages about justice and equality on platforms whose metrics encourage some of the worst aspects of human nature. I hate to get all occult here, but we have some serious shadow work to do. It all starts with formulating some kind of coherent vision for exactly what it is that we actually want to create and then taking the steps to get there gradually. How can we be different? How can we subvert the metrics that already exist? How can we create our own? How can we safeguard ourselves against opportunistic attention seekers by creating a culture that does not encourage and reward it? I think that these are some of the questions that we should be asking ourselves. I think it starts with consciously moving through the process and not just allowing ourselves to be swept to and fro. We do have a responsibility to pay keen attention to the kinds of communities that we want to create. We need to pay keen attention to the forces that are attempting to subvert and destroy everything that we're trying to build. I honestly don't know the answer to all of the questions that I've posed. And I'm not gonna pretend like I do either. 
I think it also starts with us encouraging what I like to call compassionate empowerment instead of victimhood. Compassionate empowerment is about taking into account people's circumstances and valid grievances while also providing an avenue for empowerment. We need empowered people in order to accomplish the goals that we have set out to accomplish. This culture of victimhood and the metrics that surround it are there waiting to swallow us whole. And I think it's something that we need to take very, very seriously. Thanks so much for watching guys. And I know that this is an incredibly sensitive subject and I've tried my best to cover it as compassionately as possible, but I really did feel like somebody needed to say something about it. So if you sat through this and you didn't take what I was trying to say in bad faith, thank you. As Peter Coffin says, this is the value extraction portion of the video, the part where I ask you to like, subscribe and do all the things that allow me to continue to make these videos. And hopefully what I'm doing is inspiring some form of conversation around important issues. Thank you guys so much and have a great day. See you later.